Hey there, CNCers! Let's make a gift on the long mill for Mother's Day. A multi-layered tree of life with a dangly heart for each member of the family. It's sure to bring tears to your eyes. The general idea for this project is to cut out a bunch of individual 2D layers and then space them out inside a frame to give the image some depth, as you can see here in my super detailed masterpiece sketches. I want this beauty to blend in with the decor around our house, so that means it needs to be a reasonably smallish size. That size restriction means there will be a fair amount of small details. We're going to be using some pretty small bits for creating those details. I'm using a 30 degree V bit to add some spice to the names and a 1 16th inch downcut bit for the profiles to get in all those little spaces. And because I'm using those 1 8 inch bits, I'll be using our 1 8 inch precision collet to hold them in the router snug as a bug. If you haven't used the tiny bits like these before, they are fantastic for details like small text and tight corners. I've carved some projects with tiny text and tiny details that the 30 degree V bits carved so clean and so crisp, it didn't matter that the text and the details were really small. You can find the bits used in this project on our store page, links in the description below. For materials, the layers will be fairly thin 1 8 inch ish paduk roasted maple and curly maple to give some colory contrast. For the frame. Ah, the frame. What a mess I made of that. I decided to pull a hard audible on the frame the day that we were filming. Originally, I had some pieces of maple that were just big enough to make the frame. Then I was going to cut the slots for the layers on each of the four sides on my table saw. But me being me, I decided at the last second I wanted to cut the slots for the frames on the long mill instead. I'll cover that fiasco in just a bit. In the meantime, instead of just plain old okay looking maple, I definitely leveled this frame up with this absolutely incredible bird's eye maple instead. If you can't tell, it's one of my favorite woods. Here's a tip! I just learned this the other day. I knew that a dado is the word used to describe a slot cut in a piece of wood. What I didn't know is that a dado is used to describe that slot being cut perpendicular to the grain, and it's called a groove when the slot is cut parallel to the grain. And now you know! And knowing is half the battle. Lastly, some quarter inch birch plywood for the backer piece of the frame. My material size helped me judge the project size when I was figuring it out. In VCarve, I set up my document to the final size of the project. It made it easier to visualize and lay out while designing. Setting up guides for the groove allowances in the frame to make sure I accounted for that space was a helpful reminder. I imported the branch and heart vectors from previous illustrations I've done, but you can find similar freebie vectors online with a quick search. I started tweakerizing the branches and leaves until I was happy with how all the layers overlapped. I'm using that tiny 1 16th inch downcut bit for all the profile tool paths in this project. The downcut bit leaves a clean cut on the face of the wood, which for me was the most important side. For those hearts I mentioned, we're going to tug on the heartstrings. Oh, that's terrible! <laughs> <laughs> by adding kids' names to the hearts or leaves, or whatever shape you choose to use. If you haven't watched the custom Mother's Day wooden utensils video we did last year, check it out right here. In it, I go over how to import and trace someone's handwriting, or a doodle they've done, and how to add it to your piece to really customize it. Because I'm able to just copy between versions of VCarve, I'm just going to copy and paste the traced kid name vectors from that project into the one we're working on now to save some time. I'm using that 30 degree V bit for carving the names. It's going to do a great job with the tiny details while still carving deep enough to give it some relief. Because the text is so small, I don't have to worry about the V bit going too deep into the wood, so I don't need to set a flat bottom. If you're not super comfy with the concept behind V bits, check out this little ditty we put together to help you understand them better. <coughs> Huge disclaimer here, folks. After I designed more or less the entire project based on what the final size and layout would be, I had some pretty huge woodworker's guilt for wasting material. So I shuffled some things around to maximize the material. Please don't think I pulled a fast one on you here, I just decided to try not to waste. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. After I moved things around to maximize the material, I wasn't all that thrilled with the name being kind of all alone at the bottom. I had another idea that would allow me to add another layer for extra depth, and another material for even more colory contrast. So I added some hills to the project, and then moved everything down to the bottom left XY00 datum point. To recap what I've created, even though yours might be different, the family name, the front tree branch, and the background hill are in roasted maple, the front hill is in the lighter maple, and the hearts and background branch are in Paduk. Once I finally stopped tinkering with the design and shifting things around, it was time to save some tool paths and start bringing this multi-layered stunner to life.
after the layers were all cut out, it was time to work on the frame, and this is where I called my audible. I thought that if I cut all the slots out of one long piece instead of four shorter ones, it would make lining them up as a complete frame easier because I knew that they had been lined up when they were cut on the CNC originally. So that's what I did. I created a file in vCarve with all the slots that I would need and used my long mill to cut them out. For those slots, I used a 1 8 inch down cut bit. It's the big brother to the 1 16 inch down cut bit we used for the other profiles. I've got my long frame piece with slots cut in it now and I'm just cutting it to lengths that I need. I had previously tested my 45 degree cuts on my miter saw and they were pretty close. So hopefully they're tight miters when they all go together. It's time for assembly. I dry fit all the pieces before anything else to be sure assembly would go smooth. There was a little bit of adjusting to do and I won't lie, with pieces this delicate, I broke a bunch of them a few times each, actually. So there's definitely some CA glue helping keep everything together. I also changed my mind on leaving the grooves in the frame empty where there was no layer. I liked the look of the slots filled with wood that matched each of the layers, so I had to cut and fit those before continuing. There wasn't a ton of sanding needed, to be honest. I cleaned up some of the fuzzies here and there and cycled through all the grits all the way up to 240 to make sure the frame was silky and sanding was pretty much done. I wanted the names on the hearts to pop a little bit more, so I gave them a spray clear coat as a protective layer before painting the names. And here's my tiny paintbrush that I'm going to use to paint those names. Clearly I'm not staying inside the lines, but that's why I laid down that clear coat first. It will allow me to sand off the extra paint on the surface of the hearts a little bit easier once it dries. A quick sand for each name, and booyah, the names look way better now. For finishing, I will be totally honest, I had no idea what I was going to use until I had everything cut out. I tested a couple of different wood waxy products that I have laying around, uh, but came back to one of my favorite finishes when the project isn't going to see a ton of use and abuse. Clapham's Salad Bowl Finish. This stuff is ridiculously easy to apply. Use a rag, wipe on, wipe off, you're done. To get in the crevices, I bust out a couple of different sized paint brushes to get in all those little nooks and crannies, and then wipe it all off. Now, you might have been wondering what my plan was for hanging the hearts on the branches. I'm gonna go pretty simple on this. Some tiny chunks of wood with little grooves cut in them, super glue, and some really tiny thin wire. All these layers are fairly thin material, so rather than trying to drill holes, I thought it would be easier to just super glue the wire and the wood to back of any of the branches that you wanted to. I debated long and hard about the order of operations for putting this all together. I decided that gluing and nailing three of the sides first would give me some structure and still allow me to slide the layers into the slots. I won't lie, this part of the project was pretty stressful for me. I'm definitely not a picture frame 45 degree angle miter master, but I try to be a perfectionist and these two worlds do not usually coexist peacefully. It definitely reminded me of how much I still have to learn and practice in other areas of woodworking and it was absolutely sobering. You know how I said sanding was almost done? I kind of lied. I forgot that once I had the frame all put together, I was going to need to fill in any of the fine gaps. So if you didn't know this trick, you can grab just some woodworker's glue, spread it on the spot that you want to fill, grab your sander, and sand that glue out, and the sawdust that is created by sanding, mixing with the glue that's already there, will fill in the gaps very nicely. Despite all the bumps on the road, I really like how this project turned out. I love how all the layers play off each other to give it some depth. I've done similar style projects in other materials over the years, and people always seem to enjoy the aesthetic of how the layers kind of like interact with each other. While I didn't do it on this project, maybe you guys can level the project up by adding an LED light somewhere to change the way the layers cast shadows. We want to see what you make with this idea, so make sure that you post to the social so we can see all of your masterpieces. As always, we appreciate your support, we love that you chose to hang out with us, and we hope that you were inspired to go and make something by watching this video. Now get out there and have some fun making stuff. We'll see you around the CNC. Oh no! I broke the eye because I was rough!